Joining us now with reaction, author of the New York Times bestseller, Treason, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, Newt Gingrich. By the way, he has a foxnews.com opinion piece coming out tomorrow on the president's address. How are you? Good. You've been here once. You sat back there once or yeah, twice. once or twice. Um, what would you think? Best speech of his career. I've blown away. I mean, better than the inaugural, better than his Gettysburg speech. Uh, he was in command. You were watching the President of the United States in a way that I thought was very profound. He actually did get, Cliss and I were sitting on the Speaker's aisle on the Democratic side so we could watch them. And he actually began to build momentum all evening of more and more Democrats getting up, more and more applauding. Um, he had a brilliant opening, you know, con condemning anti-Semitism and condemning the killing of the two Indian Americans in Kansas. And, and laying out a case for people to, to look at, talking about uh, Black History Month. And I think probably the Democrats were startled. I mean, this was not what they expect from a Republican president. But he went on to, I think, in many ways unify us and to lay down some tough lines. I mean, you're exactly right on two fronts. One, there are left-wing Democrats who are never going to be for us. And not the answer there in the free societies, you go beat them, and that's okay. Um, there are some Republicans who don't get what the president's trying to accomplish, and they're sort of a nuisance. But I must say, and I had a, a very good chat with Speaker Ryan uh, before the speech, um, I think there's a very big desire to get very large things done, bigger than we did in 95, 96. That's saying a lot. It is saying a lot. No, I, I say this quite deliberately. Uh, you start putting in massive tax reform, you start putting in serious immigration reform. You start putting in a uh, very real effort at, at, at really profoundly shifting the health system. I had a very good talk today with Dr. Tom Price. Who, you couldn't get a better health and human services secretary. So I, I come out of tonight. I mean, I'm a Trump fan, and I, I really wanted him to win. And there was a brief moment early on when I stopped. Chris and I were chatting. I thought, what if we were walking in to listen to President Hillary Clinton? And it did sort of give By the way, I wouldn't of, have been there, but okay. That's, <laughs> but that's it gave me a sense of, of how big the gap is. You wouldn't is. have been there, and I wouldn't have been there. No, you would have been home watching on your couch drinking beer. But it did make uh, me feel a lot better about the speech I saw. <laughs> yeah, I, think you're, I think you're right. Let's talk. I, I'm trying to say that the Republicans bear the burden here. Because sure. it was obvious tonight, there's nothing that Donald Trump can do or say that they're going to support. I, I would say the vast, overwhelming majority, you may get Joe Manchin in the Senate. You may get a couple of, you know, the, uh, when he talked about the steel made in America, I saw some, some there were, rust oh, belt. There were glimmers. There were, gl there were a few glimmers. So on a couple of issues, they're not going to help on the overall agenda. Well, I think it depends on how it, gets, how it develops. He's going to split the Democrats in infrastructure. I mean, he may get half the Democrats for an infrastructure bill. Because and if you watch, that was the first thing they really all stood up for. Yeah. Uh, cause government it spending. World, that's right, government yeah. spending. And also, a lot of them represent urban areas that are in terrible shape. I mean, where, where the, the highways don't work, the metro system doesn't work, the waters, I mean, think about Flint, Michigan. And if somebody comes along and says, hi, I've got a program so you can have safe water in Flint, Michigan. You're the congressman from Flint. Do you want to work with them or not? We're going to so work with them. Infrastructure will break them, I think, uh, substantially. Were you happy about Because I'm always worried about the trillion-dollar price tag, because that sounds like a... You, why are you not worried? And he mentioned tonight, this is what I was interested in. He talked about government and business partnerships right. to get the money. Well, first of all, notice the way he said it. Yeah. A trillion dollars worth of infrastructure. That's a good because point. Because if you apply the, the woman skating rink model, and you've heard me talk about this, mm -hmm. where Trump came in radically under the price of New York City. I think it's like one-sixth or one-eighth the price. You apply, and then he said this tonight when he talked about he's already starting to cut the price on the F-35. So I fully expect him to come in, whether it's going in space to Mars and Moon, whether it is building the F-35, whether it's building infrastructure, I'm, I'm building the wall. I certainly hope at every front we're going to get a Trump frugality. And you like the get, woman rink. Like the woman Under rink. budget. You know, had a schedule, had a using schedule. common sense. Yeah. I liked that very much. I liked his reference to fighting this terrible drug epidemic and the whole effort to deal with the, with the opioid epidemic, which is terrible, both in terms of cutting it off at the border, but in terms of helping human beings uh, who may currently be addicted. So I, I thought it was a, a very compelling speech across the board. Uh, and I, and I, I was watching some old friends. I've known General John Kelly for many, many years. I've known General Mattis. 
Uh, I was, and, and these are professionals. These aren't Republicans. They're not right wingers. But I was watching their reaction. I think they're very pleased to have this commander in chief. You could see it during the evening as the speech went on. You know, they were paying attention. They really felt like they were part of a team. The fact that, A, he keeps reiterating his commitment to the promises he made, which I also believe will help the country, is reassuring. Sure. But I also think that the narrative that the left has been trying to advance, oh, that he's crazy, oh, that he's unhinged, he was as presidential, including the inauguration, as anybody would. You, look, you've seen Carter, you've seen Reagan, you've seen sure. Bush 41, Bush 43, Clinton. Is there anybody you haven't seen? I've been seen? around for You've been around for a while. How does he stack up? Well, I, I think... Actually, I think that he certainly would rival Reagan uh, in, in a different style. And this is part of what people got to understand about, about Trump versus normal politicians. Trump's not a great orator. Trump, Trump doesn't rely. I mean, Reagan clearly is a better speech deliverer. But this was a speech that, was, that had hammer blow after hammer blow after hammer blow. He talks about, I want to help the inner city. I mean, how can you not respond to 4,000 people being shot in Chicago and be glad you got a president who's There's a practicality to him, I mean, though. Yeah, everything with him is, what do we need to get done? How can we fix it? What's going to work? It's total common sense. This is the first pure entrepreneur we've ever had as a president. And as you know, I'm writing a book on understanding Trump that will come out this summer. And it's partly based on the idea that he is so different than anything we've ever seen, including me, by the way. I mean, I find myself every day studying Donald Trump and trying to figure out what is he doing because he's so much more complicated than I would ever have thought possible. In a good way. In a good way, in the sense of a really smart senior guy who has solved problems his whole life, who has been practical his whole life, who's proven to us with his cabinet, he can recruit a good team. Isn't it isn't the amazing thing is if you apply, remember the Grace Commission back in the Reagan sure. years? Let me, let me backtrack. Grace Commission, the big, big, biggest, best, smartest business minds in the country, they came up with recommendations, how to run government more like a business, and how many were adopted? Zero. Right. Okay, so now you have somebody that's actually implementing them without right. even a commission. I mean, now you actually have, but now you have a business leader who, first of all, is not afraid to make mistakes. And this is part of what the news media doesn't get. Of course Trump's going to make mistakes. He's doing more original, unique things than any president in modern times. Well, nobody can do all that and not make mistakes. But he knows as an entrepreneur, you make a mistake, you back up, you correct it, you learn from it, you move forward. Mm -hmm. Other guys would sit around and plan for seven years before they tried anything. Right. He'd have done 600 things by the time their plan was finished. Yeah. Now, if you were Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan, or if you were advising Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan, what would you say to them? Well, very, first of all, they're very smart people, and they're very good friends of mine. McConnell knows more about running I'm the Senate. I'm more skeptical than I am. of. Now, McConnell knows more about running the Senate than I will know in my lifetime. He did a great job Paul, Paul holding and I off was, that seat. For this, this will drive you nuts. Oh, great! Paul and Thanks. I were talking tonight. Yeah. We may be the two most wonkish speakers <laughs> yeah. in the history of the United States. We both love ideas. We both love public policy. Uh, I'm going to try to be helpful to him on, on tax policy and health policy and balancing the budget. And I'm an optimist that it's, it's going to be painful and difficult and confusing and people are going to yell at each other. Uh, they did that when I was speaker. But you slowly know. over time, they chipped away your credibility and it just, sure. you know, and wore you down, tried to wear you I down. I didn't have Donald Trump with me. That's a good point. All right, stay right there. New